Meet Jeannie Kalmut. You may think that she's just another elderly woman, but this lady actually lived to be 122 years old, the longest confirmed lifespan ever. And that's pretty wild, especially when you realize that just a few hundred years ago, most people were only living to be about 50 or 60. Human lifespan keeps increasing, but let's be honest, who really wants to be 200 if it means being old and sick for most of that time? No thanks. But what if we could create something that keeps humans forever young? Imagine a world where getting old and dealing with all of those health issues are just bad memories. People wouldn't only live longer, they'd live forever. It sounds great, right? But you're probably already thinking, what about overpopulation? Well, that's only one of the things we'd have to deal with, and trust me, there are much bigger issues. We're gonna get into that in just a moment, but first, I hate to bring it up, but YouTube tells me that most of you watching are not even subscribed yet. And honestly, the best way to subscribe is to do so while you're watching the video. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that button right now so you don't miss out on next week's video. Thank you so much, and let's get into it. Now, first of all, let's talk about whether it's even possible to beat death. Are we actually working on this? Well, yes. Scientists around the world are looking into ways to slow down aging, fix cells, and even reverse the effects of time on our bodies. It might sound crazy, but the progress we're making is very real. Basically, they've found a way to take old cells and make them young again. It's like turning back the clock on your cells. They've done this in mice, and the results are pretty wild. The mice started healing faster, and some signs of aging actually reversed. We're not there yet with humans, but it's a big step in the right direction. But that's not all. You know how your shoelaces have those little plastic tips to keep them from fraying? Well, our chromosomes have something similar called telomeres, and they get shorter as we age. Shorter telomeres mean older, more worn-out cells, and scientists figured out how to lengthen these shoelaces in the cells, making them act younger. They've done this in the lab with human cells, and it's pretty promising, though we're still figuring out how to make it work safely in real people. Another thing they're working on is getting rid of old and worn-out cells that just hang around in your body and cause trouble. These cells don't die off like they should and can lead to aging and diseases. They've tested some drugs on mice that clear out these bad cells, and the mice ended up healthier and lived a longer life. Human trials are happening now, and early results are looking good. Then there's gene therapy, where they tweak your genes to fight aging. One company's even testing a way to lengthen those telomeres that I mentioned earlier using gene therapy, and it's still in its early stages, but the idea is to actually reverse aging by fixing things at the genetic level. And it's all being driven by one thing, fear. Did you know that the fear of death is the biggest fear that you have? It's so deep that your brain finds ways to deny it and block it out so that you don't go nuts thinking about it every day. It's like how your eyes don't notice your nose, even though it's right there in your field of vision. But back to the topic, if we could live forever, how would that change how we deal with this fear? Is beating death really what we want? Now sure, living longer does sound great, but what about the fear that comes with the idea of never dying? I know it sounds kind of weird at first, like what could you possibly be afraid of if you're not going to die? But one big thing is the idea of losing a sense of purpose. A lot of what we do, whether it's work or pursuing a goal or even just enjoying life like I do, is tied to the fact that we have a limited amount of time. If you knew that you had forever, what would it be that motivated you? Would anything really feel urgent or even important? there's a real chance that you may start feeling as though nothing really matters because you have all the time in the world. And then there's the fear of boredom. I mean, think about it. You'd eventually run out of new things to do and places to see, new people to meet, and the idea of doing the same things over and over and over for eternity could start to feel pretty suffocating. The excitement of life might fade away, and that's a scary thought. Oh, and by the way, would you like to talk about the Bible? <laughs> it's believed that passing away is an important part of God's plan, isn't it? So why should believers live according to the commandments if they're never going to die? I mean, a big part of spiritual growth comes from facing life's challenges, knowing that one day it's all going to end, right? But if death's not on the table, that push to grow spiritually may not even matter anymore. The whole foundation of religion could be in question, 
Now, a lot of religious teachings focus on the idea that life is temporary and what we do here matters in the big picture, especially when it comes to the afterlife. The belief in an afterlife, being heaven or some other form of judgment after death, gives people a reason to live according to certain values and morals and commandments. It's like the ultimate accountability system. What you do now affects what happens later. And basically, this would be a huge shock for religion. People would start questioning the relevance of religious rules and rituals that were designed with mortality in mind. Also, religions often bring people together, especially in times of loss or when facing the unknowns of life and death. If death is no longer a factor, that sense of shared experience could fade, and with it, some of the strong ties that hold religious communities together. But that doesn't mean that religion wouldn't survive, because most likely it would. People would probably develop new forms of spirituality or belief systems that focus more on the endless nature of life rather than preparing for what comes after. We might even start looking for meaning in new ways, trying to find purpose in a life that just never ends. For example, instead of focusing on an afterlife, people might really start emphasizing personal growth and learning. You know, kind of like a belief system where the whole idea is to keep evolving, both mentally and spiritually, since you've got all the time in the world. It would be all about setting new goals and picking up new skills, constantly pushing yourself to get better. Not because you're trying to get into heaven, but because that's what gives life meaning when there's no ending in sight. And maybe, instead of traditional religious holidays, new rituals would pop up around celebrating milestones. You know, like mastering a new craft or hitting a personal achievement. The focus could shift to creating something long-lasting, something that adds to the collective experience that might become a new way to find purpose. So yeah, religion would definitely change, but it would also probably adapt to help people find meaning in a life that just keeps on going. But enough about that. Let's uh, talk about overpopulation. Right now, about 80% of all deaths worldwide happen because of natural causes. Just imagine if that number suddenly dropped by 80% and people kept on having babies at the same rate. You, you can see how things would get pretty chaotic fast. And I'm about to get into that next, but before I do, if you're enjoying the video, why not give it a like? It's easy, just click on it. It really helps the channel to grow and it lets us keep making more what-if scenarios. So don't hesitate, hit that like button right now and I'm gonna get into the final part. Overpopulation. Now, to make that clear, let's have a look at the numbers. Now, each and every day, on average, about 150,000 people pass away worldwide. Around 120,000 of them are because of natural causes. So if we subtract that, we're left with only 30,000 daily deaths. But how many babies are born every day? Statistics show that 385,000 babies are born each and every day worldwide. So if I take my calculator and hit these buttons, I can tell you that there are about 1,183% more births than there are deaths. And if governments had a calculator, they would immediately start implementing all kinds of restrictions in order to bring the birth rates down. You would probably see them rolling out some kind of strict family planning policy. They might even go as far as saying, all right, people, one child per family, no exceptions, kind of like China did back in the day. And if you had more than one, you'd likely be facing some big fines or penalties. They'd also make sure that everyone had access to birth control, probably handing out free contraceptives. And of course, they'd be all over the schools and communities with mandatory classes on birth control in order to make sure that everyone knows how to avoid having too many kids. You'd also see a big push to get people to delay having children. Governments could start offering perks for getting married later or waiting longer to start that family. Things like tax breaks or career bonuses. The idea would be to spread out the population growth just a little bit so that it doesn't hit all at once. And don't be surprised if there's an entire campaign around the benefits of not having kids at all. They may promote the idea of living a child-free life with incentives for those who choose to go that route. Adoption could become a big focus. Governments may encourage adoption over having biological children, making it easier and more appealing for families to adopt instead of adding to the birth rate. But why would they be so worried? Well, that's right, because of resources. It wouldn't take long before we would start running out of the basics, like food and water and energy, you name it. So yes, 
The fear is not only about having too many people, it's about making sure there are enough resources to keep everyone alive and well. But even still, it's inevitable that we would run into more problems with the environment and climate change. The more that we push the limits of what Earth can handle, the worse that things are going to get. And as resources get more scarce, competition for them would heat up, leading to conflicts and potential wars. History has shown us that when people are desperate for things like food and water or even land, that's when tensions rise and the conflicts break out. Oh, and let's not forget that there are plenty of murderers and maniacs and terrorist leaders who could always feel like they're in their 20s. <laughs> Just imagine the chaos if these dangerous people never aged, never slowed down, and kept their strength and energy forever. If we throw them all in jail, well, for how long? Life imprisonment? Well, forever then? How many prisons would we need to build? So yes, while the idea of eternal youth may sound great, we also have to think about who else would get that gift, and how they could use it to make the world a lot less safe and a lot more dangerous. But what do you think of all this? Would you yourself want to live in a world where everyone lives forever? Let me know in the comments below if I missed something important. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want more videos like this, well, I have another one you might like. You should check out What If Earth's Population Increased to 16 Billion, where we talk about overpopulation, climate change, of course religion, and even the possibility of populating other planets. Thanks for watching, click on that pop-up, and I'll meet you over there in just a moment.